Okay. Hey, Steve. How's it going? I'm good. How are you, Hokon? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm down here in my little studio up in uh, Muirana having a, having a blast, as always. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. And I'm here at my house or apartment in Oslo. Uh, it's warm summer day. Beautiful. So we're a thousand kilometers apart. Yeah. But thanks God to uh, for technology, right? <laughs> yeah. Very useful. Yeah. Um, and the two of us are recently back from uh, Greenland. So have been on the ice where it's been really cold. Yeah. And, and yeah, we had a beautiful expedition kiting almost 1500 kilometers uh, along Greenland, which was, yeah, simply amazing. And uh, the reason why we're sitting here right now is that we were talking about how cool wouldn't it be to give a, a bit more insight into what happens behind the scenes, behind an expedition? What do you have to think about? What do you have? How do you plan it? Uh, and basically every aspect of it. So we were talking about and now we're doing it, which is a huge part of doing expeditions, uh, uh, posting some short videos about 10 minutes of how do we plan expeditions? Why we, do we do them? And how do we train? How do we think? How do we get sponsors? How do we navigate around COVID? And yeah, a lot of major, major questions about expeditioning. So true. And, and one of the key things around expeditions are all the preparations, because uh, if you don't prepare well, you're going to be in big trouble um, because we go to remote locations where if you don't have your gear, if you don't have your food, if you don't have everything you need and everything well planned, you're going to be in major trouble. So so it's so vital and, and you can't really forget any tiny detail because that's going to basically fuck up something for you. So yeah, yeah. And and it's a it's a big part of going on an expedition is the risk assessment, right? You have to think about risk and and if things go bad on an expedition, the outcome is yeah, not mostly good. horrendous, right? So so everything lies in the preparations and it's like in the spirit of Rudolf Amundsen, he said when he first reached the, the, the South Pole, he just hoped he, he wouldn't be that lucky because people actually thought it was easy for him. Uh, and But it was all due to, to his excellent um, work before he went on the expedition. All the preparations just made it so cool. So true. Yeah. And, uh, and that's our experience as well. And um, we're going to share some of that with you guys. Yeah, and not at least why do we do expeditions? Why do we do all this? Because it, it is a part of a bigger vision, a bigger idea of how can we contribute to something in this world? And it's just not an uh, uh, egoistic uh, point of us want to do something. It's a, it's a much bigger picture, and we would just love to share that. Hmm. So, yeah, we both have two different missions, I'd say. And um, during last year, when uh, things went south for everybody, we joined forces, we got together and we agreed that, you know, by joining forces, we can use each other's strength. And uh, because we are so different, basically, we have very different backgrounds and, and come from two different worlds, I'd mm -hmm. say. Uh, it's also quite interesting to, to work together because uh, my strengths are different from your strengths and and we both benefit from that which is amazing now that we're getting into it yeah and, and it's the whole part of a team yeah it's, it's helping each other up be, being better together wow that was a good one that's a good quote being better together yeah <laughs> uh, okay but could you tell me tell us maybe a short like history who are you and what where do you come from, Steve? Super I'm from, sure. Yeah, I'm from Norway, and uh, you know I've been I have a business background. Been working in corporate for many many years. Loved it. Loved my career and had some good years there. And then um, eight years ago, I managed to work myself sick and uh, realized you know there is more more in the world than uh, just running in the hamster wheel uh, and. I've done already a lot of expeditions and um, 
just follow my passion. So today I'm doing my high mountaineering and talks for corporate using my business background and doing many different things in addition to this. Um, but I've climbed the seven summits, which is the highest peak on each continent. And uh, both of us have a plan to do Explorers Grand Slam, which is uh, climbing seven summits and then go to the North and South Pole. However, as I was finalizing my seven summits, somebody whispered in my ear, have you heard about the seven volcanoes? And I hadn't, but now I know that that is uh, equal to seven summits, only it's climbing the highest volcano on each continent. And um, this idea grew in my head and I started to investigate. And I found that uh, as far as I know, that nobody have completed the uh, Explorers Grand Slam and seven volcanoes. So my mission is for this to be a woman because uh, it's always been a man who's been the first here in, on the moon and the South Pole and the North Pole and all that. And I would so much love it for all the strong, amazing women out there that for once it can be a woman. So I want to do that for all of us, basically. Yeah, so you, you're going to be the first person in history to do the seven summits, both poles and the seven volcanoes, right? Yeah. That is just simply awesome. And that is like, and it's so cool. That is why we, we started working together is that because you think absolutely as big as humanly possible and actually a bit more because nobody's done what you're trying to do. And if, if I go super briefly into to who am I, I'm the complete opposite. Uh, you come from the corporate background. I come from jazz. I'm a musician, I play saxophone, I've been studying saxophone for many years in, in Norway and in Denmark and playing around the world as a jazz musician on stages, in pubs and playing festivals and being the more free spirit than, than the corporate uh, tradition. So, uh, so that is my background. And however, I, I stumbled across uh, yeah, too many temptations into the world of being a jazz musician so that I kind of had to turn around my lifestyle. And that made me do more sports. I started to do extreme endurance uh, contests and extreme endurance uh, triathlons and stuff like that, which then kind of pushed me into trying a bit more extreme sportish things. So I started to climb mountains, playing concert at the summit of mountains and outside in spectacular nature. And that basically evolved to the, the complete idea of uh, climbing the seven summits with the saxophone in my backpack. So I climbed the seven summits. I've done five of them. I've been on six. I lack 50 altitude meters on Elbrus in Russia. So I have to go back to do that. And, and, uh, and Carson's Pyramid in Papua New Guinea. And then, so I climb these mountain, mountains, I play a saxophone at the summit and I compose music on the way up and I arrange it for a symphony orchestra here in my beautiful studio. That's Everest right there. Uh, yeah, so that is my project, which is a bit more cultural and, and visionary in the aspect of trying to push art into the next level. So that is my main goal. And I think that is a fairly big idea you have a big idea. We're going to the same places. So why just not join forces and do it together? First of all, it's going to be more fun. You're going to have somebody to talk to. Second of all, it's going to be much more easy for uh, like for, for security, being safe on the ice. Third, sponsors, that the, the economics go down when we join together. And yeah, so that is us. I think it's great. Cool, Seb. I just have to say that. I think it's pretty cool. I totally agree. And, and uh, we created this Dare to Dream big project, or even we, we made a company together. Yeah. Uh, and um, I think the name Dare to Dream big says it all, because um, we do dare to do that. And we, we did so in a time where most people sat at home and wondered what to do and and all the changes going on around and and we just put <laughs> took it to another level i'd say 
with with uh, setting these goals of doing these three big expeditions together. Yeah, and I think uh, we were talking about this and, and we're doing it, that it's important for us now more than ever to show that it's important to have dreams, to think big, to, to dream big and to do big. And not at least in these COVID times where the world is in lockdown, people are sitting on their asses, we're eating more junk, we're training less. And like, just to be a good example, it feeds us positive energy to do that. And, and I think uh, the outcome is also fairly cool when we show people that, you know what, of course, we can't complain about COVID, but we have to do what we say we want to do. And we do want to dream big, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's been challenging. I think we have to be honest around that because we were supposed to go to the North Pole now in April. Yeah. And then suddenly you get the message, don't pay the money. You know, that's like mm, something is up because normally people want your money, right? And then uh, they said, well, we need to look at how we can do the logistics with all the difficulties with entering Norway as we would fly out of Svalbard. Yeah. And then, long story short, North Pole was cancelled this year and postponed until next year. But we need polar experience to be able to do our Antarctica project. So we sat down and we looked at, okay, how can we do this? We could go to Greenland and we made a plan. However, Greenland was closed, so we didn't know if we could go. We, and we planned and we were sitting there and it was like four weeks, it was three weeks, it was two weeks until leaving that and we still didn't know because the country hadn't opened. But we were, we just kept going and in the end we were booked on the first flight when the country opened. We had like a crazy two week period only to, to get everything ready and go. And um, yeah, we had our permit to actually do the expedition the night at 9 p.m. before we left for the ice the following lunchtime. So it was like so tight and this would never happen in a normal situation. You would have things ready months ahead, you know? So yeah, and it was yeah. interesting. So, so horrendous, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, this year we were only two expeditions that actually managed to get to the start, like to, to the starting point. So that just proves that now it's, more difficult than ever uh, to to actually navigate in in logistics around doing expeditions. Absolutely, and and other people either cancel because they didn't want to live with the insecurity, or they they cancel because they didn't want to go during these times. You know, so. But if you want to do something, it's always possible. Yeah. So why do you think it's important to dream big? I think um, it's something that we are born with, because if you talk to a four or a five year old and you ask they, them, you know, what do you want for birthday or for Christmas? They, you know, I've, I've bought a swimming pool and I was thinking like you walk on you, I want one for you as well. A child would, would wish this, but as we grow up, we stop ourselves from dreaming and, and wanting things because we start putting limitations on that it's not possible or not at this time. And we have all these things in our head, limiting ourselves to do things. And I've seen with some of my expeditions and experiences that I've been able to do things I on forehand would have said it's not possible. And, and that makes me being able or realizing that we can do so much more. And, and I want to share that with people because people are sitting there with their dreams and they have something they wanted to do for years, but they never even start. So if we can inspire that, that would be so amazing. Yeah. And I think we're not encouraging people to go to the North or South pole or even climbing Everest. It's just that being able to, to kind of locate that one dream, what, do you want to do? Do you want to climb Kilimanjaro? Do you want to bike across Norway? Do you want to travel to Spain? The goal doesn't matter, but it the goal as a symbol is so important to have because it's going to set a direction. What do you have to do? What do you have to think about? Why do you have to save money over a period of time? Why do you 
blah, 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 have to do certain choices. And the importance of that is going to make you be more focused. Uh, it's going to express more joy when you actually reach the goal. And in the process, you're going to have that, you know, that fire in your eye that is pure passion. It's going to make you invincible. And that idea we all do as five-year-olds. We never give up. We never stop dreaming. But that kind of, you know, it, it, it gets dampened the more you grow. So I think it's just sad that people don't dream as much as we love to do as kids. Yeah. We have our, we were probably on the opposite side maybe we dream of uh a bit much but we do actually make our goals and that's a that's a huge huge difference and not just saying i'm going to do blah 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 but actually doing that and it's a mindset more than anything else i think totally agree because um it's all up here you know yeah. and uh and working with your mindset is something that you have to do, or at least if you want to do the things, yeah. reach your goals, because it's not like suddenly going to knock on your door and it's ready. And here you, here you go. Mm -hmm. You have to work on it. And, and um, a lot of the things that are challenging, uh, it's all in your head, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You set your own barriers and that's the sad part. People have never set barriers for other people. We can see that now in COVID times. Mm -hmm. It's not that allowed to travel, but we managed to kite 1,500 kilometers across Greenland. So we managed to do it. Uh, I think other people that wanted to do that, they set the barrier for themselves. And I think that's a big shame. And it's a big difference in how does our mindset work compared to people that maybe do not reach their own goals. Definitely. And, and we're... It's popular talked about growth mindset and, and we're for sure in there that we are looking for opportunities on how to solve different problems and being responsible for our actions and, and our results. Mm -hmm. and, and once you start doing that and looking at how can we do this instead of looking at all the trouble, yeah. that's a huge, huge difference. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to, to end this first one. and. Um... Uh, I think uh, we're going to touch uh, very cool uh, subjects uh, in, in the coming episodes. We're going to talk about sponsorships, physical training, mental preparation, logistics, and yeah, you name it. And even cooler is that if somebody do have a, some, some ideas of what we can talk about, what is actually interesting about this, people are hopefully curious about how do we do this. So please just send us a mail and, and, or contact us on Instagram or whatever. We're seriously reachable. So, uh, so just do that and we'll, we'll talk about uh, questions that people have. And I think this is going to be a, a cool series of behind the scenes of doing expeditions. Absolutely. Uh, and we're also going to touch around some things that could be quite interesting for corporate is around team and communication. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Uh, that is so massive uh, for success. Yeah. So, uh, looking so what's forward the mail again, Steve? What? The mail that people can send to you? That is team at dreambig.red. Yep. So, so shoot us a mail and uh, yeah, see you, see you next time. We're going to post videos hopefully as, as, as rapidly as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See you guys. And there's Dream Big. Yeah. Okay. Talk to you soon, Steve. Bye. Ciao.